Hi, I'm Hall Davidson, and welcome back to KOCE TV series on copyright for educators. All the resources you see here are available online at copyrighteducation.org and copyrighteducation.info. In this episode, we're going to cover multimedia guidelines, or digital media guidelines is another way to think about that. I want to tell you up front that when we are talking about incorporating digital media or multimedia into projects for teaching or for learning, we are relying on guidelines. These specifically are the Conference on Fair Use Multimedia Guidelines. They are not law. They are guidelines that grew out of a conference where educators and copyright holders sat down together. They are more than 10 years old a very long time in technology years, but they do give you an idea of what is appropriate usage. They can offer you guidelines for your decisions in the classroom. The two big things these guidelines can give you are, one, the very notion that teachers and students can use digital media in projects without necessarily having to ask for permission first. The second big takeaway here is that there are limitations on what you can take without getting permission. Okay, let's start talking about those with the uses. What are the uses for multimedia? Well, students can create works for use in a course. Teachers can create materials for teaching. And it goes without saying that the digital media has to be legally acquired. No pirated material can be used. And make sure that you cite it. Now, be careful what material you download from the web. If it looks illegitimate, it just might be. Sometimes you see free cartoons or videos from some sites that are not legitimate. Just use common sense. I think you'll figure that out. Now, that being said, you can use just about any kind of media in your multimedia projects. Here's a list of materials that can be used. It's a nice long list, but it's not restrictive. You can use even more than this if you can think of something. First, motion media. That's video. You can use that in your projects. Music also can be incorporated into projects. So can text materials, poems, things like that. Also, graphics. Illustrations can be used. Photographs can be used. Digital software can be used. And all of this can be blended with your own original work. Really, you can use just about anything you can think of as long as it's legally acquired and that you cite your material so people know where it came from. Now, understand that if the copyright holder has granted permission for use, as increasing numbers of copyright holders are doing, you don't have to follow any restrictive guidelines. But if you can't find the copyright holder or you don't have permission, that's what these are for. These are recommended limitations of each kind of media. And here they are. Motion media, that's video. You can use 10% of the work or three minutes, whichever is less. With text, you can use up to 10% or 1,000 words, whichever is less and, less. and that means pulling it into your own projects. You can use poems. You can use all of a 250-word poem. You can use more from a longer poem. There are some restrictions. You have to use three poems, by, no more than three poems by the same author, or five poems from different authors. Okay? Music, lyrics, music videos, you can use up to 10% of the work or 30 seconds maximum. Now remember, there are places online where people post music and other material for students and teachers to use without these length restrictions. We'll talk about some of those and use some examples later. But these are the guidelines when you don't want or can't get permission. Okay? All right. Back to these photographs and illustrations. You can use an entire work, but try not to use more than five images per photographer or artist and not more than 15 or 10 percent, whichever is less, from any one published work. All right, you can actually use copyrighted databases or tables. You can use up to 10 percent or 2,500 field entries. Now, that's one I haven't seen used yet, but since you can move spreadsheets into iPods, you might start seeing this more frequently. You can move presidential data, state capitals, periodic tables onto an iPod. So it's not unrealistic that this part of the guidelines would be used. All right, there's also a time consideration here. There's a time frame. 
The time frame is this. Students can keep their digital multimedia projects in their portfolio for life. They can use it for job applications or for college applications. They can do it. Keep, basically, they can keep theirs forever. Each author that uses it can keep one copy. Teachers can keep projects for two years or longer if they get permission from copyright holders of anything they've used in their work. There are more details on our website, so be sure to go there for the full picture. Again, I just want to say, these are the guidelines when permission is neither asked for nor granted. Teachers or students can use multimedia in this way, whether the copyright holder gives permission or not. But there are copyright holders, we like to think of them as good copyright holders, who allow students and teachers to do much more than the limitations in these guidelines. Here are a few. This is Creative Commons. It is a great and growing site where all media types, see, are offered up with a variety of licenses for educators and others. Sometimes you have full access to some great resources right here. The Commons was an area of a village that everyone shared, so this is a Creative Commons. It's a wonderful idea. Here is a commercial site from Pix for Learning. Uh, excuse me, from Tech for Learning. This is the Pix for Learning site, and each of these topics you see holds a lot of subcategories. You can use all of these that you want without restriction, and this list goes very deep. Lots of other, lots of very good stuff there. Uh, here's my favorite music site for classrooms: FreePlayMusic.com. Educators can use this really great musical material for projects in their classrooms. Now, if the project's going to get burned on a CD or go outside the classroom, go out on the web, then there is a license fee. But take a look at it. The material is really fantastic. And there are a lot more sites just like that. Explore, use multimedia and digital video and music in student projects. Create projects to teach, to teach with because learning will follow. This is a multimedia generation of students. Use it. Take these guidelines. Go forth and teach, and thank you for watching.